Hello everyone, this is Malki Asad and welcome back to the channel. Today I'm very excited to have Dr. Umar Tarek to talk about his experience mashing into interventional radiology. Welcome Dr. Tarek to the channel. Thank you Malki, thank you very much uh, for having me at your channel. Honored yes. to be here. Thank you for, for being here. I would like to start by asking you about your experience matching into interventional radiology. How did your journey start from medical school, going to research, residency, and uh, ultimately matching into interventional radiology? All right. So um, I was a fourth year medical student at King Edward Medical University in Pakistan. And uh, I went to one of the uh, top notch radiology institutes. Uh, it was a private uh, practice in, uh, in Lahore. And uh, I was very, very impressed by some of the stuff they were doing. They were doing virtual colonoscopy, which a lot of radiology centers were not doing. They had some really cool MRI sequences. So I was very, very impressed by the work they were doing. At that time, I decided, OK, I will go into radiology. And I always knew that I wanted to train in the US, but I didn't know how competitive radiology was. Uh, then I found that radiology was one of the most competitive specialty to, to get into. Uh, one good thing that I did was I think I was very well connected. So what I tried to do, I tried to use my contacts. Uh, you know, I, I was actually running a patient welfare organization in Pakistan, a student patient welfare organization. So I was in touch with a lot of doctors overseas in UK and US because they were the donors. They were donating us money for the poor patients in Pakistan. So I leveraged those contacts and I asked them if they knew anybody who matched into radiology in US. So um, I tried talking to all the people who matched into radiology in US in like 10 years before me. So after talking to them, I realized a lot of them did uh, internal medicine residency, nuclear medicine residency, and then got into radiology because it was very tough for an IMG to get into uh, radiology. But the significant portion, the majority of the people, IMGs who got into radiology were the ones who did uh, two to four years of research, significant, meaningful research. Um, and, uh, you know, so they all encouraged me to, uh, you know, indulge myself into long-term research. But the problem is how do you get those long-term research uh, spots? So for that, what I did was uh, everybody told me, go for electives. You know, once you go for electives, you uh, establish good contacts. And when you, uh, you can leverage those contacts to get a good research spot. So I tried um, applying for electives at all these top places that have research. So I was lucky. I think I applied to 12 places. I got elect. Um, I selected at 11 of them. I ended up going to only six or seven of them because of the limitation of time. So I went to Johns Hopkins. I did a research elective in internal medicine there, made some good contacts there. I went to UCSF. I did electives in radiology there for four months. Uh, I was at NIH, National Institute of Health, did an elective in hematology at Yale University in Connecticut. Uh, did electives in emergency medicine, made some good contacts there as well. So I knew people there, right? So now after doing my electives, I graduated from med school, I went back home and I started studying for USMLE step one. While I was studying for step one, I was emailing people, uh, the people I worked with during electives, asking if uh, you know I can help them with long-term research or if they knew anybody who could, uh, you know, who would, could probably use my services. Um, so Luckily, one of the people I work with, she moved from uh, UCSF to Stanford. She introduced me to another person. Uh, she put in some good words for me. Uh, you know, also, I wrote a case report as a medical student while doing electives. So that really helped. So I knew people. They wrote me letters. And uh, I interviewed, actually, very mm -hmm. similar, like on Skype or Zoom. You know, Skype was, uh, you know, during that time. I interviewed and I was selected uh, for a postdoctoral research fellowship, which was paid from day one at Stanford University. Then I went to Stanford University. I did research there uh, for two and a half years, uh, published some papers, presented some abstracts. You know, that helped me, uh, you know, uh, improve my CV, have some publications. Um, I took the rest of my USMLE exam, step to CK and step to CS at that time, and was able to match uh, in radiology with the internship in. Uh, prelim surgery. Then uh, I initially got into radiology because I loved diagnostics and I wanted to do diagnostic, but I, uh, I never expected that, uh, you know, I would like, so when I started my residency, I knew one thing for sure, that I'm not going to do interventional radiology. Now I have to select which one of the specialties I have to go into. But finally, when I got into interventional radiology, I absolutely loved everything that we were doing. My mind was totally blown away. And I was surprised how little I knew 
about uh, radiology in general and interventional radiology in specific. So then I decided, okay, I want to do a uh, fellowship in, in interventional radiology. Somehow what happened was well, by the time I was applying for interventional radiology, it turned into the most competitive fellowship to get into. But this is where my research experience really helped me. All the research that I did at Stanford University and all the skills that I acquired, I was able to utilize them during my residency. I was actually awarded three years in a row by uh, Pennsylvania Medical Society and uh, my hospital system, Geisinger Medical System, for the best research projects that I did during my residency. So these things really helped me uh, get into the competitive fellowship of IR. And I got into IR and graduated from residency 2018, from fellowship in 2019. Now I have been an attending um, interventional radiologist uh, for two years. Awesome. I would like to ask you about your research experience. So how did you get the research position at Stanford? What type of research you did? How many publications before you matched? Uh, good question. So uh, like I said, you know, um, there was this person, Dr. Daldrup Link. I met her while I was doing uh, electives at uh, UCSF. Uh, she was a pediatric radiologist. We read some studies together. I was the student sitting next to her. I asked her if I can help her with, you know, a case report or writing some projects. She said, no, I don't have anything going on, but we can apply for a grant together. That didn't get approved. But then she, she moved from UCSF to Stanford. Later, she was looking for uh, two research fellows for her lab. And one of her uh, colleagues, Dr. Vasanawala, was also looking for a research fellow. So they uh, both offered me actually a research fellowship because of my experience uh, working with Dr. Beldrup Link at UCSF. So that's how I got it. Um, my research was mainly focused towards uh, 4D flow, which is a uh, volumetric, uh, you know, imaging uh, of uh, um, volumetric MRI imaging. And uh, we basically used volumetric MRI imaging to quantify blood flow, uh, velocity and volumes in the heart. So that's what it was. It, uh, you know, the problem with research is a lot of time you're naive. If you're coming as an IMG, you don't know uh, that it's going to take you years to get something published, right? That's one thing that I learned. So I think I got only two or three publications by the time I applied in two years. Uh, but I did have uh, three presentations, abstracts. So that really helped me. But by the time I matched, I had six of the publications. I honestly feel the number of publications don't really matter that much. It's the quality of publication. A lot of my friends were doing research in basic sciences. They only had one publication in the span of three years. But if it's a significant, meaningful research, uh, I think that that's uh, something much more valuable. Yeah, I definitely agree with that. So you see so many IMGs focused on, on the numbers. We want more and more case reports, review articles, stat yeah. pearls. They are not as valuable as having a real original research in high impact journals. Agreed. Yeah, like think about it. You can, you and me both know we can produce uh, 10 case reports, but the value and impact of those 10 case reports is not going to be as much as compared to one or two original research projects, right? And uh, one more thing that I would like to emphasize to everyone is that if you want to, uh, you know, if you want to do some research, uh, try to go into a bigger higher institute like Stanford University, Johns Hopkins, Harvard, MD Anderson. The reason is uh, most of the meaningful, significant research is unfortunately happening only at these top places. So if you go to a mid-tier or bottom tier place, you probably will spend a significant number of years doing research, but you won't be able to go anywhere with it. So if you, and also when you're trying to find a mentor, trying to find somebody who has a good track record of publishing papers, go to pubmed.gov, see how many papers have they published in past one to two years, see how many people they have worked with, they have successfully matched eventually for a competitive residency. And all the stuff that you and me talk, are talking about, it's not only about radiology or interventional radiology or plastic surgery. This is about any competitive specialty. When you're coming as an IMG, and if you're trying to get into a very competitive um, specialty, you need to have something in your CV that can uh, you know, make you stand out. Yeah, that is true because the, the, you have to have mentors to guide you through this process. It's very tedious, it's long, the connections are important. So that's why you need a good mentor to help you support you along the way, not only in research, but in your residency application as well. Agreed, yeah. One more thing that I will say is like, see, if you're not raised in US, we are naive to a lot of things. We don't understand the significance of personal statements, CV, interview. You can probably get away with, uh, you know, 
uh, I'll say other stuff, but if your CV is pretty good, if your personal statement is well-written, you know, if it has been reviewed by your mentor, he's guiding you, okay, these are the little things, move them here. That goes a long way. So I think, the, yeah, I, I would not never underestimate the significance of having a good mentor. Awesome. What do you think of the value of USMLE step scores when matching into interventional radiology? It's important. It's a uh, very, very important. So recently, I, I have my own channel, Med Edia. I recently interviewed my fellowship director, uh, who is now the residency director of interventional radiology as well on my channel. And, uh, you know, we were talking about it. The thing is, there's one thing that we as IMGs fail to understand. Even if you score 270, 260, your scores alone are not going to get you anywhere. You, uh, yes, good scores are going to help you. If you have low scores, you can supplement that, you know, with significant, meaningful research. If you have good scores, that is definitely better than low scores. But good scores alone are not going to help you. So I will say if you want to get into interventional radiology, uh, try to score as high as you can. And if for whatever reason you didn't score as high, then try to supplement it with other stuff, electives and research. And now things are going to change. All these dynamics are going to change because step one is going to become pass fail too. So that also changes that. That I think that makes uh, the significance of uh, research and electives, especially for IMGs, a uh, lot more uh, because you know there are other factors. Because step one is now two seventy is equal to two ten because everybody's pass fail. Um, I interviewed some of the candidates for IR residency and IR fellowship uh, a couple of years ago, and I realized a lot of people were standing out about the ones who a had awards in some capacity for whatever work they were doing. Could it be it could be philanthropy, it could be research, or anything. You know, um, it something that made them really stand out. For our viewers who don't know what are the pathways for intervention radiology, is it a residency, is it a fellowship? What are the different pathways that applicants can take to get intervention radiology? So interventional radiology pathways, so the problem is interventional radiology is now transitioning from being a fellowship to its own residency. Now it has its own match. It's a totally separate residency. Uh, but now, uh, if you're a resident, a uh, radiology resident who's graduating, you can still do an interventional radiology fellowship uh, for two years. That's separate. That being said, if you are a medical student right now um, or a recent medical graduate applying for residency, then you will apply for interventional radiology residencies. So these are two separate pathways. You can either do a two-year fellowship after doing a diagnostic radiology residency or you uh, apply straight for the interventional radiology residency. And how long is each? So uh, diagnostic radiology is five years, and then interventional radiology is a two-year fellowship. And I think interventional radiology uh, residencies, which is completely separate, I'm not sure, but I think it's six, six years or seven years. Awesome. What is the value of U.S. clinical experience for those looking to match into interventional radiology as a residency or for diagnostic radiology and then followed by fellowship? See, it, uh, U.S. clinical experience is a very broad term. Right, U.S. clinical experience could mean electives, uh, it could mean externship, it could mean sub-internship, it could mean observership. Uh, I will tell you something from experience that the most boring observership you can do is actually going to be in radiology or interventional radiology. Because see, you're not actively doing anything. If you're in diagnostic radiology, you're just looking at images. If somebody's reading a CT angio or MR angio, you're just sitting next to them and uh, watching them scroll and you don't even understand the images that well, right? Because you're just a student. And similarly in interventional radiology, you're just watching somebody moving, playing, maneuvering catheters and wires, and you don't understand the anatomy or the images or what's happening. So I will say it, it helps to make good contacts that you can utilize to get research, uh, which will eventually help you get into radiology or interventional radiology. And this is specifically for IMGs. Um, if you're just doing electives or observerships in radiology, um, especially considering how competitive it is. Uh, so let's say if there's somebody with scores of 260s, 270s, um, and did uh, like two or three months of electives or observerships or externship in radiology and is now going for match, hoping that they will be successful and they will match. No, I don't think that that's, I will say it's only 10 to 20% chances of you matching. If you want to get into residency, you need to have long-term research with uh, significant meaningful publications. Is there anything that dis distinguishes interventional radiology from other specialty, other competitive specialties? You think that program directors would look for something specifically for that specialty or it's similar to other competitive specialty with the 
good scores, good clinical experience and research. So when you say that, do you mean interventional radiology from other subspecialties of uh, diagnostics or interventional radiology from, uh, you know, other clinical specialties like internal medicine or surgery? Other clinical specialties from compared to IM, surgery? I, I think, honestly, uh, it's the personalities in general. We are looking at surgical subspecialties. Uh, you want to get people who are uh, motivated, uh, who are team players, as well as good self-starters. But these are actually pretty much the same stuff that we're looking at any competitive specialty. So I don't think there's anything significantly different. That being said, I think uh, one more thing that I will emphasize is the interest in the field. Uh, if you're somebody with just good high USMLE scores, uh, I don't think you can get into uh, any competitive specialty, including IR or uh, diagnostic radiology. So that is something if you're doing research in radio interventional radiology, or if you have awards related to radiology, that is something that would really set you apart. Um, of course, I will not underestimate the importance of good USMLE scores. The only thing about the scores is if you have low scores, which I did, my USMLE step one score was only 220. When you have low scores, you can supplement it, but the cost you pay for that is spending two to three years of research and trying to really excel in the research side, try to get multiple awards and multiple publications to make up for that low score. Once you do that, when you go for interviews, your interviews is, are most of the times end up happening regarding the research that you did. Okay, awesome. Do you have any final advice for applicants looking to match into interventional radiology or diagnostic radiology uh, if they're just starting to know like they have no idea they just started preparing for the step exams what advice do you have them for them so i'm glad you asked me this 15 years ago i asked this question from a lot of people i knew and the best advice i got was reach out to people who have successfully matched into the specialty that you want to get into and talk to them Talk to each one of them and see what, for, what worked out from them. See, every specialty has these zebras. And what I mean by that, are people who have a completely different pathway. You might come across somebody who would say, oh, I have very high USMLE scores. I had average scores, but I had some other advantage and I was able to match into radiology or neurosurgery or plastic surgery. Those are very few and far between. If you talk to five different people or 10 different people, you will see a pattern. And the pattern is that most of the people who match successfully followed a set pattern. So that's one thing that really helped me that I spoke to all these people and I found that yes, there were two or three zebras who had their own unique ways or got lucky and got into radiology or interventional radiology. But most of the others, IMGs, irrespective of which country they're coming from or where they did research or what they did, almost all of them had a pattern. And uh, the pattern was two to three years of research, multiple publications, significant meaningful research, not just case reports or abstracts. And then they were able to get um, into radiology or interventional radiology. So for younger students who are preparing for steps, try to score as high as you can. Uh, not rely just on your USMLE scores or USMLE, uh, you know, passing and high scores. Try to explore other avenues, try to do electives, research, observerships, uh, you know, and then, uh, you know, try to have more stuff in your CV, uh, publications, abstracts, case reports. That's something that's going to really set you apart. One more thing that I want to add here is uh, the alternate pathway. Uh, a lot of um, IMGs have done residencies in their home country. Uh, there's something that ABR American Board of Radiology has and called alternate pathway. What that means, if you have done a residency in your home country, you can do three or four fellowships and then you can practice as a radiology attending. So a lot of our radiology attendings are from India, UK, Pakistan. They have done residencies from their home country. They came and did, uh, you know, four or five fellowships and they're very well respected because they have done multiple fellowships. They are very, very smart. Uh, that's one more pathway. One last thing that I will add, if you want to come into interventional radiology or radiology and you don't have any experience in research, uh, there's one more pathway that I've seen a lot of people do. They do residencies in nuclear medicine, internal medicine, peds, neurology, whatever you can get into after doing their residencies or even during the residency, they keep applying in these competitive specialties, including IR and radiology. And if they're successful in matching, they start that. So uh, we had two or three people, IMGs, uh, who did that. One of them was an in internal medicine uh, attending. What the other guy came from neurology. We had one person who switched from ENT. You know, so there are people who are switching all the time. 
but just get your foot into the door and the foot into the door into the door could be uh, with significant research or uh, residency in another specialty awesome before i end up uh, i want to tell the viewers that you have a youtube channel and uh, can you tell the viewers about your youtube channel please Thank you, Moke. Okay. Uh, I'm, I'm actually glad that I bumped into you. Uh, a lot of my content is similar. Um, I had a website that I made, medidia.com. That was made in um, 2008. So it's been 13 years. Um, it was made because I consider myself uh, very lucky and fortunate that I applied for electives at, for, at 12 places and I got accepted at 11 uh, out of those 12. I realized that, uh, they, especially at that time, think about it, you will think that there is a lack of uh, awareness of, for IMGs. 13 years ago, it was much worse. So I started this website and, uh, you know, um, a lot of, if, to help people get electives in US. And that really took off, you know, just like uh, how your channels uh, took off because there isn't much, right, guidance, especially for IMGs. So that was that. And then, you know, as I'm sure you will also uh, notice in your life, once you become a resident, your life is extremely busy. You don't have much free time for your other ventures. So I didn't touch my website for all these years. Now, you know, because of the website, a lot of people know me. And they still reach out to me for guidance, you know, on uh, how to get into competitive specialty or how to prepare for interviews and stuff like that. So, uh, it, see, think about it. If there are 10 people reaching out to you, you're talking to 10 different people for an hour guiding them. So I thought it would be so much easier for me just to put YouTube videos uh, for them um, for guidance. So uh, initially, the content I uploaded uh, is uh, in my mother tongue, Urdu, because a lot of people who were reaching out to me were from Pakistan, India, that's why. But now we're slowly shifting away and uh, the guidance now is we're putting more and more videos in English. Uh, and that's just for the same thing, you know, to provide guidance to IMGs on how to successfully match. Just because I think you're doing a phenomenal job. Uh, there isn't much guidance out there, especially for IMGs. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for uh, doing this interview. It was a pleasure having you here and talking about your experience. So thank you so much for taking the time. Thanks for having me, Moke. And you're doing, like I said, a phenomenal job uh, for all the IMGs out there. Thank you on behalf of all of those IMGs. Thank you. I appreciate that. For our viewers, if you have any questions, leave them in the comments below. And me and Dr. Tarek will respond to you. If uh, you have any questions, also you can reach out to me on Instagram or Twitter at Malki Asad or my Facebook page, Malki Asad MD. Thank you everyone so much for watching and see you in future videos.